Hi crafters, thank you for joining me for part two. I'm going to start off by doing a little more watercoloring, or actually, excuse me, I'm doing ink blending. So I'm using the oxides in Abandoned Coral, Wild Honey, Cracked Pistachio, Broken China, and Walnut Stain. So I'm just going to be laying basically just laying down a good layer of color and I'm going to be doing graduated strips of each color and then finally here I am uh, ending it off with a little walnut stain at the bottom and now I'm taking my large squirt bottle and very very slowly and carefully letting it just dribble little bits across this panel. I do not want to flood it. And now you can see, um, as I'm picking it up with a dry paper towel, you can see that it removes quite a bit of color. And it does this on um, certain card stocks. But I really love the way it turned out. So now I'm taking my very favorite floral paper from the whole paper pack. Um, and I'm going to put a little strip right on top of my colored panel. And now I'm going to use a little bit of twine. And I believe that this is uh, the Lawn Fawn Lawn Trimmings, I think they call their, their twines. So now I've just uh, tied a little bow, wrapped it around twice on my panel and tied a bow. fussing fussing <laughs> and I'm just going to put that panel down on my card base and as mentioned in the previous video all of my card sizes are going to be the A2 uh, size card which is four and a quarter by five and a half now I'm taking a piece of the Audrey blue cardstock and that beautiful stitched stamp and I'm going to uh, do some heat embossing with my white embossing powder from Hero Arts that is my go-to white powder. It's beautiful and I love it. So now I'm using that really nice sentiment stamp from the Simon stamp set. Um, and I can't think exactly what it says right now. <laughs> like sending you a handcrafted hello from so very far away. Anyway, so now I am heating that and then I'm doing a second uh, stitched line along the top. That white is just so lovely on colored cardstock. It's just beautiful. So now I'm trimming down my little sentiment. You can see that it's not um, absolutely perfect, perfect, perfectly straight, but I'm not going to panic. I mean, these are handcrafted cards, so you can expect some imperfections. <laughs> So you can see that I uh, popped it up on foam tape and I'm just going to set it down there and I'm going to make sure that the little bow um, is on top. And that is card number five. So card number six, I'm taking a piece of the burnt orange uh, cardstock and I'm going to use the same sentiment stamp. Um, I really love that. Now um, you can see I used that ma uh, matrix embossing folder and then I have a little piece here that's the same width and it perfectly fits that stamp. So this time I'm going to stamp it in the walnut stain oxide ink and emboss it with clear powder. At first I was going to use my Versamark and I'm like, wait, no, <laughs> I'm using the oxide. And I really, really want to make sure that uh, I press well and get a really nice transfer of color. Make sure I keep my fingers out of the heat. That's always a challenge. 
So now I'm using a top folding card base and I have this nice piece of the burnt orange again and then I wanted to use that absolutely darling typewriter paper and then I'm just using that cute diamond pattern paper as a little accent. And that panel is just going to go down on my card base. And this is when I'm realizing that that panel is a little too wide and it's covering up too much of the cute paper. So I'm trimming a good half an inch off of it and that's just going to look a little more balanced. Um, I also wanted to use just a little more of that Lawn Fawn twine. And again, I'm just going to wrap it around twice. And I, you can see there I had my um, scotch tape and that's how I secure my ribbon on the back side, or excuse me, my twine. And then I tied a bow with a little extra piece of twine. And again, I'm going to pop up my sentiment piece on some foam tape. I'm still using that same roll, uh, that gigantic roll. <laughs> so I think I've been using that for about a year now. It certainly has lasted, and it's awesome. So really, it is worth the price. It hurts to pay for it initially, but it's worth it. Trust me. <laughs> All right. So that is card number six. Very simple, but very cute. So card number seven, I'm going to use the other embossing folder, which I think is called, oh boy, I can't remember what it's called, Gridlock, there we go. So I'm using those same colors again. There is the Cracked Pistachio, Abandoned Coral, Wild Honey, and Broken China. And again, I'm thinking about, as I'm doing my little blending here, I'm thinking about uh, the colors that are going to mix nicely together. And I really want a good amount of ink on there. And so you can see that I am using a particular side of that embossing because I wanted um, all of those squares. I didn't just want the lines. So I flipped my page over and I'm making sure to use um, that particular side of my panel. And you can see that those um, embossed panels are just lovely and they're wonderful for sponging. So I'm just going to go ahead and attach that entire panel down to another piece of the slate cardstock and I just trimmed my embossed panel just a little bit so that you can see that little edge and I'm pressing it down but protecting the ink from my fingers because it's not totally dry. <laughs> so now I went ahead and cut a whole bunch of slate circles and a whole bunch of pattern paper circles. And I'm just going to use the Simon uh, Tacky Glue. And I like offsetting. You can see how I'm going to offset those pattern paper circles um, over the slate. I like the look of that. That's inspired by a recent Sherry Carroll card. Um, if you follow the Simon channel, you probably recently saw Sherry's beautiful video and she did those little offset circles and I just loved them. And you can see that um, I have three different sizes and a bunch of the different pattern papers. There's those cameras again. Love those little things. So now I have um, just kind of randomly scattered the circles around and uh, you can see that I was popping up some of the circles. And then I'm using the Crafters Gonna Craft sentiment. And again, I put it on slate with the white embossing powder and just put some foam tape on the back of it. And now this entire panel is going to get attached 
down to a side folding card base. I just love all the colors of this card and it's wonderful for using up scraps of pattern paper. All right, so for card number eight, I can't remember what I did. <laughs> I'm doing this voiceover really late at night while everyone's sleeping and I'm, I'm getting a little punchy, so I apologize. I am sticking down my paper here and um, let's see. Oh yes, this is the one that I'm gonna do um, kind of creating my own paper because you know I absolutely love doing that. Um, so again, there's those four familiar colors that I've been using throughout this card series. And the stamp set with this wonderful um, diagonal line strip stamp, if you will, <laughs> Um, plus that little stitched line stamp. That type of stamp just begs to be turned into a background. So I'm using the lines on my craft mat to help guide me as I do my stamping because that stamp is exactly a half an inch wide and all the little boxes on my craft mat are also a half an inch. So they're really, really going to help me line everything up the way I want it. So I'm going to skip um, a space and stamp the abandoned coral again. And there's room to skip another space and stamp a third time. And you'll see in a moment that I will fill in those spaces with the wild honey. So here I am with the wild honey now, and I'm going to stamp between each of the abandoned corals. Now I have the Simon Says Slate ink, and I knew I had this ink in my stash, so I was really excited to pull that out and use it for this panel. So now here comes the little stitched stamp and I'm just going to go between those two colors I've already laid down. I wasn't sure at first what I was going to do, but then I decided that this would be a little easier, so I am just going to stamp it um, in each of those white areas just once. And by using the abandoned coral and the honey, out of the four colors, those are the two warmer colors, and then you'll see me bring in the cooler colors right now. So here is the cracked pistachio and you can see that I've turned my card base and lined it up uh, very carefully on my craft mat because I want to use those boxes again as a guide. And I'm getting nice and inky here and I'm going to start stamping down the green. And with the spacing that I'm using I'm going to have room for two of the cracked pistachio lines and then you'll see me come in with the broken china and do two, two of the blue lines. And it's so nice with the oxides because since they are a hybrid of dye and pigment um, the colors remain true even when they overlap each other. So you can see on the stamping I've already done where that green has overlapped the honey and the coral. Um, you can still see that there's green. Do you know what I mean? Um, it didn't get muddy because pigment, of course, is opaque. So you can see that with my spacing, those other colors work perfect. And now I'm just putting down the final stitch lines. 
So that is my little custom plaid background paper. Now I have cut a circle of slate and I'm just going to treat the surface and this time I'm using that You Make Everything Colorful sentiment stamp again. And I'm also going to be um, embossing it in white so that it really, really stands out beautifully against that slate. If you don't have slate, cardstock, and ink in your collection, I really recommend <laughs> that you get some because um, it's just such a wonderful, surprisingly neutral color to add to your card projects. You're going to hear my cat. He's very vocal, and since I'm the only one still awake, he wants to play. So, of course, I'm heating this. And again, that powder just melts so beautifully. Now I've taken the button paper, which is another one of my favorites out of the paper pack, and I've just uh, cut a partial circle, and I'm going to stick it down there above my sentiment. And there's my side folding card base, and I'm going to just attach my little custom panel, which has also had a chance to dry, because you want to remember that pigment ink takes a little longer to dry, and you don't want to be smudging your colors after all that work. So see, I put down a piece of paper to protect it just in case. And now I have covered my little sentiment circle with a whole bunch of foam, foam dots. Those dots are quite high, so I don't use them very often, but for this project I thought it would be fine. And then another thing that I noticed in the stamp set is that there's a little stamp handmade by, um, gosh, I can't even read that tiny. <laughs> I think it says something like handmade by someone super crafty or something it's like someone super crafty named. And then there's a, a line that you can stamp as well. So I'm stamping both of those in the slate ink on the very back of my card at the bottom. And this is really nice because um, after all your hard work, it's kind of nice to sign uh, your card that you made it. So I'm just going to put my name and a little heart, because why not? And then I wanted to use those gorgeous crystals one more time. And so I'm taking the opaque pink ones. And again, it's just such a gorgeous contrast on that slate. So I'm laying out three different pieces right now very carefully uh, just to see. And now I'm going to use my sticky tool and again that wonderful uh, tacky glue because I can get such perfect tiny dots of adhesive. I'm sorry my hands are in the way but it was really the only way to be precise. <laughs> Or at least as precise as I can be. So I did that little line of three and then I decided to put more on the top. So there are five more and I just think that looks really really sweet. So that is my final card. Alright, so one by one I'm going to lay out the cards. This will include the four from my previous video, which you're seeing now, and then the four that we made today. This is a really, really nice card kit. Um, I definitely, I know that I'm, you know, months late <laughs> giving you this, but this was not a kit I wanted to overlook because I love the colors and absolutely love the paper pack. So I absolutely had to use it. And these cards came together a lot faster than I thought. I thought that it would take a lot more time than it really did. And believe me, there are a lot more supplies left over. I could make multiple shaker cards with all of those crystals. 
Um, there's a ton of paper. I've got the three beautiful envelopes. And of course, the stamp set is mine forever. And it's going to take me a long time to use up that glue. So these kits um, really are worth the money. Um, so if you're not a member yet, you might want to really consider uh, subscribing to the Simon Card Kits. But anyway, I had so much fun. It was so great to be back again making this type of video. I really hope that you enjoyed watching. Uh, please be sure to click like. And if you're not subscribed, I would love to have you join my channel. That would be amazing. And after I'm back from my vacation, um, I'll be making plenty more crafting videos. So please join me again. Um, I appreciate all of you very, very much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.